Oh shit, it's Game Punks. Hello. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Okay, yeah. Good. We're good. Oh. It is Game Punks. It is Game Punks. <laughs> it certainly is. We back. We back. Again, again. And this again. time I I played games. Like I played game games <coughs> to talk about. I also played game games. Game I play, game. I played a lot of fucking games. And there's game news, so this is gonna be a proper fucking game punks for once. Yeah, we had one of the best Nintendo Directs ever. Oh yeah. Oh fuck yeah. And we get to talk about Sans not being an Undertale. What? He is an I Undertale. Mean, fuck, no, uh, <laughs> Smash. Fuck! <laughs> I can't believe I Sans isn't. A, I can't believe Sans isn't an Undertale. Where the fuck uh, is he from? Who is this character? No. See, my point on that argument is Undertale is in Smash. Sans himself is not. That's as that's as fair. Costume. That's fair. Like and like, I'm I'm not. I'm stoked that Undertale is in Smash, but saying that Sans is in is ridiculous to me. Seeing as it's just me, Gunner, and he has no move list. And well, you well you could you can customize the move the the move list to feel like a Sans move list. Yeah, but I mean he doesn't have. I mean, it's Sans. It's not like we know what Sans looks like when he fights anyway. Considering he fights yeah. uh, as an RPG battle screen, so yeah. <laughs> with a bullet hell element. But I mean, his final smash would be like the screen goes black and then you got to jump over the fucking things and like yeah that hell. that's that that's would be true great. that's true like the second that that's in the game. Sans is in Smash. Yeah, he's not. He's not. But a, now not it's just like it's that. just Undertale being like being in kind of oh. like how Shovel Knight isn't. In yeah, Smash, isn't in Smash. Just yeah. Shovel Knight. The character is a fucking assist trophy. He's there. Yeah, and it's cool. But it's. I think it's nice to see Nintendo give. Uh, anyway, let, before we get into this, I have game to talk yeah. about because yes, I got true. game and game is we good. Do our week. Oh. oh yeah, you got three houses. Okay, so I got Fire Emblem three houses. Uh. I so a a switch. yeah, remember a couple months ago when I was like, mm, I don't know about this. You were wrong. Yeah, scratch all, everything that I fucking said. I was wrong. Uh, I love being proven wrong, and this is a great thing to be proven wrong on because I was so ready to be disappointed by this game. Uh, this game far beyond exceeded my expectations. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. It's the new Fire Emblem game on Switch. Uh, my intro to Fire Emblem was like the Radiant games, like Path of Radiance and uh, Radiant Dawn. Uh, um, I played them at my friend's house. I I never played the Game Boy Fire Emblems until very recently, and I've never played the NES Fire Emblem games like ever, except for when I tried out Gaiden to see what it would be like switching to Shadows of Valentia. <coughs> yeah. uh, Gaiden is a, not a good game, and uh, immediately regretted it because it sucks and is bad. But uh, Valentia is kind of everything good about Gaiden, but also a good game. Anyway, I like Fire Emblem a lot. I think the, my proper introduction to the series was I went to New York City in like 2000 and I want to say maybe 2013 uh, when the mm -hmm. game when when Awakening came out and I went to the Nintendo store. I wanted to buy a 3DS game at the Nintendo store because I was like, hey, I'm at the Nintendo store. If I don't buy a 3DS game here, I'm a fucking chump. So yeah. uh, I went to the, the person at the cash and was like, I, I saw all the games and I'm like, okay, well, I see Fire Emblem. I see like, you know, whatever the fuck else had kind of just recently come out. And uh, I was scanning the, the shelves and I was like, <laughs> I don't know if anything here is really to my interest. So I asked the, the cashier, uh, what would you recommend for the 3DS that has come out recently? Uh, and she's like, okay, what games do you like? I'm like, well, I like RPGs. And she's like, well, luckily for you, an RPG literally just came out for the fucking 3DS. It is called Fire Emblem Awakening. And I said... Uh, yeah, okay, I'll try it out, because I'd never properly sat down and played a full Fire Emblem game on my own. I'd certainly never owned one. Uh, yeah. So I, you know, I picked it up, uh, and in my hotel room that night, I played about halfway through the game, just in one sitting, because I got just ridiculously, needlessly addicted to it. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. The gameplay was so fucking infectious. I, I, I fell in love with it overnight. Uh, by the time, like, by the time I was done that play session, I think I had played, fuck, a good, I want to say maybe a, seven hours to eight hours of the game, and I'd al my character had already uh, S-supported with another character, and I had already S-supported two of my other characters and had some of those little paralogues where their kids uh, are born open up. So I, like, went halfway through the game just in one sitting, and I... I, I did I had no idea how much I would fall in love with it. So uh, you know, move forward to 
uh, I guess 2015 was when Fire Emblem Birthright and Conquest came out. I went all in. I bought all three versions of the game <laughs> oh, on no. the same day. But I bought I I started with uh with Birthright because yeah. uh, that's the version I wanted to play because it had the <laughs> kind of the Japanese Eastern aesthetic, and I was like, that's different yeah. for Fire Emblem. So like uh, I I don't remember the difference between those ones because I remember like I've been looking at Fire Emblem games for fuck I don't know, like maybe three years now, right? And mm-hmm. just being like, I want to play. But I don't know where to play, like which one to grab and Aw- like have a good time. Right Awakening. Now. Awakening is. Yeah. That, that's, okay. I, I say right now, Awakening is the game that got basically the whole, it's the game that saved the franchise. And yeah, with, yeah, yeah. with good reason, because it is really good. But Awakening is a really, really fun game. And Fire Emblem Birthright and Conquest, look at, they're, they're not bad games. They play well. They feel good to play. The yeah. the problem with Birthright and Conquest comes in the narrative. Whereas the narrative is that of the Time Children one? Yes. So the yeah. the well the Time Children well no, they're not time children. They're like weird uh-huh. uh born in a spatial anomaly children, which is stupid. Uh yeah. it's ba- it was basically a way for the the creators to shoehorn in the mechanic of having children again. And yeah. as much as the child mechanic in Awakening was like one of my favorite parts of the game because it's it's a fulfilling way to kind of elaborate on character, uh, there was no like narrative justification for this to happen in the game. So they kind of had to create this thing called like the I don't remember what it was called, but it's like a realm that y- you and your party are able to enter because of like Corin's special powers, and this <laughs> realm exists within like it's a, just... it's like it's like a castle. And it's just a fuck realm. It's yeah. It's basically like a big. It's a. It's a like this big, huge kind of like interdimensional castle in the middle of like a spatial anomaly where time kind of passes differently, and there's different areas there that you can enter. And you're you're a little dragon companion in the game who's like your childhood friend who has watched over you since you were a, a child. Uh, yeah. She's like this this dragon of space and time that can like manipulate dimensional portals and stuff. There's a lot of like interdimensional portal shit in the game because it's one of the few Fire Emblem games that doesn't take place in some iteration of the same continent and country collection. Yeah, uh, it's like it's completely original. It's very like narratively uh, and historically as like a ge- geographically play ge- historically geographically separate from all of like the rest of the game series uh, to the extent where it seems like it takes place in another dimension entirely. Um, <coughs> but anyway uh yeah those games i think ultimately failed to capture the spirit of awakening because the narrative was just not as good there was a lot of kind of weird not great character stuff in it too about certain characters just feeling undercooked and certain characters feeling almost too written like overcooked oh yeah overcooked uh you know and the the game kind of reeks of uh, pardon me using another cooking analogy but too many cooks in the kitchen they're trying to they're trying to do too much at once they're trying to make a sequel to awakening whilst also making like the first dual version like multiple story path fire emblem game and they could have stuck to one of those ideas and it could have worked uh but they stuck to trying to make a sequel to Awakening justifiably because the game is awesome and it deserved a sequel yeah. uh, or at least a successor of some sort. And what we ultimately receive is kind of this half-baked thing where like the character stuff that you really like in Awakening isn't there, but the gameplay is like the peak good Fire Emblem gameplay. And it, I think it's indicative of how good the gameplay of the game was that it hasn't changed in Three Houses. Now, there is a Fire Emblem game, Shadows of Valentia, between Three Houses and Birthright Conquest. But Birthright and Conquest feel nothing like Valentia, and Valentia feels nothing like Birthright and Conquest or Awakening, because it's like a remake of a weird Fire Emblem game where there's dungeon crawling mechanics, and it plays more like a traditional RPG uh, with like Fire Emblem maps you know Mm -hmm. like because there's like full 3d like terrain traversal in that game and then the battle system instead of like an rpg battle system is you go into a little fire emblem battle so it's it's like playing a traditional rpg with fire emblem as its battle system it's an it's a it's a different kind of game it's a great game mind you shadows of valentia is in my opinion a top three fire emblem game it's fantastic especially considering (laughs) it's a remake of a game that i think sucks um but um yeah, Three Houses, to me, 
feels like the sequel to Awakening that we never got. But it's also, in some weird ways, kind of an elaboration on gameplay elements introduced in Shadows of Valentia. So, um, the Three Houses' whole, like, gimmick is that you are a professor at a monastery called Garrig Mach, which is mm-hmm. essentially a school to train soldiers to defend the three nations of this continent called Fodlan. Now, the three nations are uh, the Adrestian Empire... Uh, the Leicester Alliance and the kingdom of uh, the kingdom of, I don't give a shit. Uh, I don't remember what it was called. It's the the most boring of the houses by far. Uh, The uh, (laughs) it's here somewhere. I swear. Um, uh, uh, It is here somewhere that, ah, yes, yes, yes. They are called the, uh, the, uh, uh, the king, blah, ah, kingdom of Fargus. It's Fargus. So yeah, Fargus. the Adrestian empire to the South, the Holy kingdom of Fargus to the North and the Leicester Alliance to the East. So one of the key powers in Fodlan as a region is the church of Saros, which is basically Ooh. the prime. Well, I'll get to that. Basically the, <laughs> Basically, the primary religious organization of Fodlan and all three of these uh, nations have some level of devotion to them. And Garrig Mach is a monastery that is located at the center and the convergence point of these three kingdoms. So, uh, basically, the Empire and the Church have old beef, um, but... Basically, in the year, basically, the Empire was the first nation that existed in Fodlan. It was powerful, but they beefed with the Church of Saros. And that kind of break in power in the war between the Church and the Empire um, uh, allowed the kingdom to split away from the Empire, and the Alliance then declared its independence <laughs> from the kingdom. So the, hmm. the Alliance is a democratic kind of social. It's, it's, there's, there is clear social hierarchy. But it is a, it is in, in like you know in theory a democratic place that's ruled by multiple people who sit at like a council. Yeah. Um, the kingdom is uh, basically a theocratic monarchy, and uh, like a like a, um, an at, like a, a like a, a holy kind of absolute religious monarchy, and the Adrestian Empire is a fascistic fucking empire. They are fascists. Uh, they are fascists. I do not. I do not know how to say it apart from they are imperialists and they are fascists, and so many people are so enamored with them, and I'm like, mm, big. Well, I mean, it's kind of like the Empire in Star Wars. That's what I'm like, thinking. It's big Star Wars Empire vibes, where it's like there's yeah. part of my brain that's like ooh cool Empire, but there's a part of my brain that is like morally and ethically fucking <laughs> yeah, like, completely finds it repu- yeah repugnant, and it knows that it's fascist. Yeah. So yeah, I they have the cool suits. Ugh. So I. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's it's such like a mm, like sticking point yeah. to me anyway yeah. uh i picked the lester alliance uh you you as a as a character enter into the story uh during a period of peace between these three nations uh and are taken in as a professor at garrig mock uh along with your father who's basically rejoining the knights of saros after years of leaving their service for reasons which are unbeknownst to you uh and are not revealed to you until much later but um Yeah, so you join up and you take over one of the three houses as kind of their head teacher. You're basically the same age as many of your students, not as not as much as all of them. But like there are students you have that are maybe in their early 20s and some that are as young as like 14. But Mm -hmm. I want to say Byleth, the character who you cannot customize Byleth's appearance, but you can choose between male and female Byleth. I chose female Byleth because why would you choose male Byleth? Um that would be such a waste. Um, so <laughs> immersion. I I've literally never played a Fire Emblem game where you can pick a character as a male character. Yeah. I've never decided to do that. It's weird. Uh, and Fire Emblem is gay, so I won't do it. But um, anyway, gay. Uh, yeah, I picked female Byleth, <clears throat> and female Byleth is the head of one of the houses. You get to choose which one to be the head of. I chose the Lester Alliance because I didn't want to teach a bunch of uh, uh, fucking uh, Hitler youth. Uh, yeah. is nor that, is that the Black Eagles? Yes. Uh, yeah. Nor did I want. That's the one I want to go for because the the waifu 
is mean here's, and looks here's at the, you like you're a piece of shit. Here's the thing about mean waifu. <laughs> It's all good. I'll probably play a Black Eagles campaign after this one. Yeah. Uh, because there are people on the Black Eagles that I really like, and I ha- I ended up recruiting three of them to my side before the war. Okay, wait, I'll get to that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, there's, the blue, oh, no. there's the Blue Lions, who Prince Dimitri is the commander of. Edelgard is the head of the Black Eagles, or like the head student. And the yeah. Golden Deer are led by Claude, who is the Claude hair- is so hot. I love Claude. I also picked the Golden Deer house because Claude is hot. Uh, yeah. But he's the heir to the Lester Alliance's like lead family. So, um, basically, you get to choose. I chose the Lester Alliance. You go on like little missions where you train them, and it's like you know, go and take out some bandits or fight some mercenaries for to train them. Do all these little missions like that. But the in-between part of the game is where the bulk of the story takes place. Uh, kind of like most Fire Emblem games, is the narrative is kind of central to the game. But yeah. it rarely, rarely do the battles hold as much narrative weight as the interstitial periods between them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, in between the, the battle stuff, you traverse Garag Mach in a fully you know, rendered 3D explorable world. Uh, it's not the most detailed it could be, but it's basically as, or if not a little more detailed than the 3D dungeons in Fire Emblem Shadows of Valentia, which is really mm-hmm. cool. Uh, and that's the part to me that feels like Valentia. Uh, and you go around and you talk to students from other classes. You do like uh, like classes with them, like you teach them and it boosts all their stats. You can choose to privately tutor students in particular things so that you can get them to be certain classes. Like yeah, you, you gotta work on those uh, social. Yeah, social there's links, there's uh, social links. There's social links yeah. with every student for the, for the most part in the school. I heard that also every student has social links with every other student. For the f- yes, yes, nuts. that is that's absolutely nuts. true. And they, you now you can only make them have social links with every other student if you recruit students to your side. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. in order to do that, you can like have tea with them, do tasks for them, recover lost items for them uh you know like do like little quests like i said do tasks um and then eventually if you kind of perform well enough and you make your stats and like you make yourself look like an impressive and talented tutor to them based on their interests so byleth if you make byleth a good all-rounder byleth has the potential to recruit pretty much everybody if you want there's some students that are harder harder to recruit than others because there's their standards for their professors are really high and some mm. who want like stuff like maybe your charm skill to be bigger than yeah, your yeah. sword so skill or something it's the persona s ranks yeah exactly right? it is it is literally just s ranking and persona it's it's the mm-hmm. it's the supports and persona but anyway um so you can recruit certain students from other houses to your house if you do that the first person to join my house outside of the uh, regular golden deer guys was sylvain who has very low standards apparently he's kind of a womanizer from the black eagles is he is he from the black eagles i think he is probably no maybe he's not sylvain oh no he's the he's from fargus actually sorry he's so he's a blue lion so sylvain yeah. sylvain joined me he's a he's a there's there are people in Fodlin called crest bearers who can wield specific weapons and have like special battle abilities sylvain's one of the crest bearers so i was kind of happy that he was the first one to be recruited into my side because i wanted more crest bearers on my team who could closely to immediately start using their abilities mm-hmm. but um he's become a pretty good all of my units are very strong at this point but he was a good one to have early on because i early on upgraded him to like a, a riding unit so i had like some cavalry uh which was nice now I have a lot of cavalry, but prior to that, he was my, my first one, so it was good to have him. Uh, then I also recruited Bernadetta and Dorothea from the Black Eagles. Dorothea is one of the few characters in the game that uh, either gender of Byleth can S-rank and have a marriage relationship with. So I wanted Dorothea specifically because I want to wife her up because she's hot. Uh, she's got uh, big titties and she's an opera singer. And she's also... What more could she, you possibly She's need? She's also flirty, but like an ally which is dope. So uh, I say that she's an ally as if she isn't openly bisexual, but um, she's an ally in the sense that she's also not a uh, fucking class traitor. So uh, I brought her in and I really liked her. Uh, I have, I have S ranked with her at this point. Well, I've done everything to S rank with her. Now I just need to wait for the game to basically end. So I can. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, but I've also s ranked with Claude because Claude Hot and my Byleth. I play Byleth as a Byleth. So, ah. so uh, I'm hoping, Hi. I'm wondering who the fuck I'm going to end up with. Uh, I got Dorothea, who is also from the Black Eagle. She's a nervous girl who doesn't want to leave her room. And I was mostly tempted to get her just because I thought she was cute. Uh, and her character archetype was like the first time I've seen a character who's like an, ob- <laughs> an, an obsessive and, you know, an obsessive paranoid shut in that didn't piss me off. Yeah. So um, I liked her. Wait, and you I... didn't like Futaba? No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's such an annoying trope in Japanese games. But I, I liked her and she has all of these characters have really extensive backstory. There's so many characters who I have no idea what they're like yet. And I've just kind of like, you know, I've gotten to the point in the game where you are fighting some of the other characters and potentially killing them. And I felt like super bad that I killed a few of them uh, because I'm like, I never got to know you, but I remember doing chores for you in the game. And I kind of liked you and I'm sad that I had to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but anyway, the big thing about this game, I think the big pull apart from the three houses and the three different paths in the game is that halfway through the game, there's a divergent point. And there's hmm. there's four diverging points in the game. There's the church route, the empire route, the Fodlin route, or the Leicester Alliance route. Um, obviously, I, I ended up in the Leicester Alliance route, uh, but um the church route is one that i don't really understand how to get to yet i'm gonna have to look it up but it's interesting uh the Lester alliance one is the you and claude are basically trying to liberate uh fodlin and uh the dimitri one is you are running away with dimitri uh, and trying to get revenge and uh the eld edelgard one is you're conquering fodlin so um i i didn't really want to do the edelgard one uh but all I have to say is there is a twist in the story. I won't really give it away apart from, like, it goes to show you empires are not to be trusted. Um, don't do it. Don't do the empire shit. Uh, but it's not a political game. It's not. It's, the game is not political, it's even though... It's political. Yeah. I, no, I don't, no, 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 no. Thankfully, no. I, don't, I don't think any of any developers have said the game is a political thing. Oh, no, fuck. for sure. But it's... What, uh, fuck, what was the one... What, uh, the division right the division's the one where it's yeah. like oh yeah we want to keep this apolitical and literally like, set in bombed really? out washington dc you fucking okay. idiots yeah, you fools whatever. you fucking dumbasses so but hilarious. yeah uh so three houses yeah the battles are great uh i really really like a lot of the maps in the game something cool that i really like is now you have the ability to fully scale in to like the a people-sized version of the map Whoa. so you can kind of like you can move around the map at like full zoomed in Kind of like, you know, when, you know, in, in Fire Emblem Birthright and Conquest, there's like a seamless transition between battles and the map. And now this mm-hmm. you can basically seamlessly transition between uh, an aerial view of the map, an isometric view of the map, and, and you can rotate the map entirely in 3D so you can like go in any direction uh, yeah. for your strategy and battle sense. And there's like... There's, like, destructible stuff in the environment that can prevent you, so you have to get rid of it by destroying it. There's, of course, doors and chests and stuff like that. And there's, um... There's, I don't know, the maps feel so detailed and fleshed out, and the fact that you can zoom into, like, a fully 3D rendered version of it to traverse and battle in feels really cool. And it makes the game feel big, but you can still play it, like... When I'm playing on the TV, I like to zoom in all the way and have this big kind of cinematic view. And when I'm playing on handheld, yeah. I like my little top-down uh, or isometric yeah, views. Field of view. Exactly. But on the TV, it looks so cool to big to do the big 3D fully rendered version of the mm-hmm, battlefield. Mm-hmm. When you just press the plus button on the battle screen, it does yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just it helps that it's not in a 720p. Exactly. It looks really good. Screen. Like... And you can, uh, you can uh, basically, it's... I don't know. The, the, oh, yeah, the the kind of game you want to play is fully customizable. You can choose to turn on or off permadeath. There's like three or four levels of varying difficulty Ooh, for the game. Permadeath. You can turn. Oh, for characters, yeah, for, right? Yeah, yeah, you can turn okay. permadeath for characters on or off. Uh, I choose to take it off just because I it actually kind of psychologically damages me when one of those characters yeah, dies. Yeah, it really fucks me up. Too yeah, it, it makes me death, really but... upset, and I, like, I... That's why I can't... I have such a hard time playing games like that, but there is, like, ways to prevent it. Like, there's a, a mechanic in the game where you can reverse time back to as many turns as you want. So yeah. you can re- you could potentially restart any move that you make that leads to a character's death. 
but sometimes you know the you just made a series of bad moves and you have to restart all the way at the beginning i've done it a couple times i'll be honest but uh even with like permadeath on or off i feel bad when the characters die so the idea of them being gone forever in that game makes me really upset because i i this is the first fire emblem game i've played since awakening where i pretty much like every character they're even the characters that seem kind of shitty and weird and misogynist or like whatever at first end up kind of being likable by the end uh like sylvain is a fucking like he's a creep straight up a creep but his attitude and why he is like that seems like slightly justifiable to me because his whole thing is look i'm a noble i have a crest i'm gonna be married off by my father inevitably to somebody who i do not love to somebody who does not love me and only married me for status and i'm gonna fucking hate my married life so i'm gonna enjoy being like a single ready to mingle you know late teen early 20s boy while i can and i will hit on as many fucking girls as i want i will break as many fucking hearts as i want and i'm like you're kind of an entitled misogynist but you're also living in like a feudal system where the only thing that matters in terms of your choice or who you want to love uh, or have any sort of relationship with at all is based entirely on status so i get if yeah. you just want to go around fucking people forever you're you're a man you're a bit of a man slut but like I, I also get it. in like in a time because it's, it's fucking futile right yeah. so like he, you could die tomorrow in battle exactly you don't know. He, so, he's I he's kind of like yo, yolo like, let's eh. fuck yeah, yeah let's go <clears throat> uh lawrence is another character he's part of he's one of the golden deer students so i had him from the beginning he's he's a very prim and proper noble he's very posh he's kind of pompous and he comes off as pretentious and kind of obnoxious at first uh he's always propositioning female students for uh like marriage as only if they're nobles though and he's always uh like so he's kind of creepy like that but he's also always like helping people out if there's like a student who's from a common background um he he treats them with respect and dignity and equality because he does he he you know he believes in equality between allies and he yeah. he well he doesn't believe in you know status equality between nobles and commoners he does believe that it is the duty of nobles to protect and treat commoners well uh because if the commoners are giving them you know tribute uh then you should play them back with protection that you're supposed to owe them in return and so he he believes very deeply in the system and is essentially actively trying to make it the best that it can be he's also and the whole thing with the marriage shit is just like look it is my duty as a noble to get married to somebody to continue my noble lineage if i marry a commoner as much as i fucking love them it would not be good for me but i will but he still he treats everybody with <clears throat> a level of respect that you wouldn't expect a noble to despite kind of some of his weird problematic tendencies and in the end i kind of now that i've i've a ranked him with a bunch of characters i kind of i get i get his mo yeah. i get why he would be likable um yeah so i, I like <clears throat> lawrence too but like apart from lawrence and sylvain the rest of the characters are like great like gr- like universally characters i consider great characters there's a character called hubert who you you get in the uh, black eagles storyline who is edelgard's like butler and he is essentially like a fucking psychopath who wants to murder everybody but he really wants to kill (laughs) you specifically but it's like weird and like oddly endearing that he's such a wacko um and there's like um uh Sh- your problematic face yeah well yeah he's he's very <laughs> problematic uh i did uh murder him senselessly though in the second half of the game because yeah, i ended up fighting him. <laughs> uh Bye. so i killed him in return uh and he was like i've been waiting to kill you for like five years and i'm like bro <laughs> bro i'm sorry Griffin! I literally, literally with one sword you are gone but um yeah. is there okay uh is there any because this game feels like there's there like, is berserk shit in this game. Gotta, yeah, there's got to be like a berserk nod. Uh, there is definitely well, there's a character called the Death Knight who just looks like the Skull Knight. Yeah, yeah, I saw and that. The, there's a yeah. there's actually a bug that people exploited where you can take the Death Knight on a fucking date. That's so funny. 
<laughs> you just go have tea with the death knight. I'd have, I I'd have tea sick. with the death knight, even though he's a murderer. Um, he's He looks pretty sick to have tea with. I wonder what tea yeah. he likes, because the characters all have different tea preferences. Uh, oh, yeah. I wonder what tea he'd like. Isn't there one character that's like, I fucking hate tea, Yeah, but I want to hang out with people. How do I do that? Yeah, there is a character who's like that. Yeah, the the suggestion box mm-hmm. or whatever. That was really really funny. I, like, Though, yeah, there's so, there's much, so shit. much shit in this game that I I keep you mentioned the suggestion box. There's like a a church suggestion box you can answer questions to. Yeah, yeah, and it's like a silhouette of the character, and you have to just guess. Yeah, guess who it is. You guess right. Yeah, right. usually I guess pretty um, right. Yeah, but sometimes I, mean, I, I g- sometimes I give the wrong answer, guess. no matter if I guess the character right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, there's just so much in this game that's like, wow, this looks like it's got stuff that I like yeah. in it. I, I've been talking... Mrs. Yeah. Krabappel. I've been talking about Three Houses for 30 minutes, which I think is more than enough. But it's it's really great. Three Houses has basically like restored my faith in Fire Emblem as a franchise again after just kind of yeah. being disappointed. Well, disappointed by, by Fire Emblem Birthright and Conquest outright and kind of just like... in. As many people really are, really think. enjoying and wanting more after Valentia. So mm. it, it's like this is this is kind of the thing that I this is what I wanted from Fire Emblem. I yeah. got what I wanted and uh, I got mine so I'm fucking happy. I also played uh, as Banjo in Smash. Uh not a character that I see myself playing all the time, but no, they're fun look, to play. Like, I watched his move list. Um it it seems very bottom tier. Uh, but that's not to say that there wasn't gallons upon gallons of love poured into this character. Yeah, the yeah. animations look great. He, he like, looks his moveset makes sense. He look. This is honestly uh, the best banjo has looked fucking ever. Yeah, mm, yeah his move set totally makes sense. Uh, the Spiral Mountain stage is really fun, actually. It's beautiful. It looks so it's, good. It looks so and it, good. it plays really well because it changes up the the floor of the battle, which is cool. Um, yeah. So I like Spiral Mountain, and the music is great, obviously. Um, I did that. I had a really good time with that, uh, even though I don't see myself playing as Banjo again. I also got, yeah, I mean, finally, after, I guess, like, not bothering even looking it up, I, I got uh, Switch Online. I got my Nintendo Switch Online card. I paid 25 bucks Ooh. for it. It was cheap as fuck. I, I bought it the same day nice. I bought three houses. I was like, yeah, 25 bucks, whatever. Uh how about Tetris 99? Uh, I've not started playing Tetris 99 yet, but I have been playing the Super Nintendo and NES online services. Yeah! Uh, I was playing okay. Puyo Puyo for fucking three hours straight last of night. Of course you were. Oh, I love Puyo Super Puyo. Puyo Puyo 2. I, oh, I love Puyo I was Puyo. so hyped. I love that fucking There was so game. many games on that that, like, on that list that I was like, what? Breath of like, Fire. Super fucking Metroid? Breath of Fire. I cannot yeah, wait Breath to play Breath of Fire. I cannot I wait. Mean, Super Metroid made sense yeah. that it was going to come. But for it to be one of the first ones, I was like, whoa, cool. I love Breath of it's Fire. Really nice. I, I, it's really nice. I, cool. I've played the shitty Game Boy Advance port and I still loved it. I'm so I'm so down with this. Like, digital is kind of a sketchy topic when you're talking about games. Because, uh, like, the Darkwing, or the DuckTales remake. And like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. The uh, Scott Pilgrim uh, uh, game. Scott Pilgrim yeah. game is fucking gone forever. Uh, but at the same time, this is a service now play is great. Super Metroid legally on your sp- without having to pay f- yep like uh, 200 dollars. yeah it's great for a fucking cartridge that may not work right yeah that's that's the thing you got to keep in mind is sometimes and you don't have to use the big the big e yeah which is i th- definitely what nintendo did this to avoid but honestly yeah um this is a pretty good way to play all of these games they're saved yeah. they're safe states I, on all of them EDF- how does EDF run? Because I I, really I've, I, I have not uh, I have not played EDF yet, but I will. Okay. I played a bit of Twin B though on the NES. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like Twin B. I played um, Yoshi. I played Yoshi because that game's really good. Underrated. Yeah, it's a good game. Underrated co- good cookie game. based puzzle game. Um, I yeah, I've been enjoying myself immensely with that. It's, I I've only played a handful of the games. I played some Kirby's Dream Land three. Um, oh. that was. Kirby's so good. Kirby's Dream Land Three. I forgot how like beautiful and Yoshi's Island esque that game is. Yeah, no, it's it's got a really man, cute art style. Like I want to, because Kirby games are underrated. I uh, yeah, of course like, they are. They're but I mean, amazing. All of them are good. It's nuts. It's nuts. Like people know the character Kirby, and Kirby's immensely popular. But I don't feel people play Kirby games. Kirby, you know, I only know a handful of people who really love Kirby. I think Dex and my friend Rob. 
And, and yeah, fun. you, Ben. You can count them on one hand. Yeah, me, myself, if I count myself, and like a couple of my other friends, I guess, who who love Kirby as like, from obviously from an art design standpoint, but also just uh just the, the games, games sherry good. likes kirby but like it's the people you would expect of, of course yeah. sherry likes the people kirby. <laughs> you would expect to like kirby like kirby you know yeah versus uh like i don't know a lot of people who are super oh you know who likes kirby brian from let's fight a boss likes kirby uh it's yeah. his favorite game series which is cool wooly from castle Super yeah Beasts wooly loves kirby th- is the kirby advocate yeah he's he loves fucking kirby uh but uh i think that's yeah like kirby is kirby doesn't get the love for his games that he deserves because yeah. i have not played a kirby game ever that i didn't like they are all good all of there them. there is no bad game all of them kirby's dreamland which you would think would be the bad one is fun yeah, it's, it's a good golf game yeah oh kirby's dream course like, you mean uh, dream yeah course, that yeah, game's good fun. that game's I... awesome uh kirby's dream course is fucking great uh the weird Even like the weird, the weird niche, kirby game on, yeah. on game boy advance amazing mirror which is like a metroidvania is good yeah uh there's the the one where you uh the ds one where you have to draw oh yeah canvas fucking... canvas curse that game's awesome yes that game's great it plays so well squeak squad which is kind of like uh, squeak squad's probably the worst kirby game but it's still really good anyway and yeah, it has a epic lot of yarn, unlockables. Epic Yarn is that great. game is amazing. It plays very well. It's not well. very hard, but it's good. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> so it's so good. Like Kirby, oh the Triple Deluxe Planet Robobot, two of the best games in the series. Planet Robobot is amazing. That game is I'm so awesome. glad they gave the man a mech. Yeah. Oh, and it's so fun. The mech shit is so good. It is. And it is. uh, it's the best. uh, Star Allies on the Switch. I had such a great time with Star Allies. I loved it. Uh, it's not the longest Kirby game, but it feels jam packed. Which yeah. is nice. And the mini games in that one are fun. And now there's a Kirby Monster Hunter clone. I cannot believe that. That's yeah. so crazy to me. I only I only got what it was like the third time watching that trailer. And then I was like, oh, it's just Monster Hunter, but with Kirby. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Oh, oh it's so sick. Like and it, I mean it's, it's free to it's a free, it's free to it's start. It's a free to start it's, game. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really cool. It looks fun. I, I'm probably yeah, going to try it out at some point, uh, as, lo- yeah. as as well as Tetris 99, which I I get I a, get I a get a, basically a subscription to. So I need to get a Switch so bad. Like I was thinking about it. Uh, I went to a friend's house last night and we just played video games and did what we do every Saturday. Um, and like I was like, you know, I was thinking about it. And like for the past like I think couple of months, I've been like, should I get a PS4 or a Switch? And I'm like, why would I get a PS4? To go backwards in time to the things I already missed when the Switch is already getting things like uh, the new Pokemon, yep. Astral Chain, which Pat from Castle Super Beast came out and said, I I would rather have an Astral Chain 2 now than Bayonetta 3, which is fucking nuts. That's insane. Because that man loves Bayonetta. I, I, I cannot wait to get Astral Chain. I cannot wait to so get Astral Chain. So having heard that... I'm, I want to buy a physical that, copy of that. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I'm... Like, I'm f- debating buying the game before I can even afford a Switch just to know that I've locked in a physical copy. Not that I think they'll go into obscurity or anything, no. but, like, just so I can it's... look at it. Switch, Switch has been pretty good about physical releases being widely available of even the most obscure yeah. titles. Well, it's just, I went to EB Games the other day to s- just go look at the box. Oh, the, the, one, at, uh, like, the, uh, the one at uh, Complex des L? Uh, yeah, yeah, the Atwater, uh, no, uh, Miguel. Yeah, the Miguel one, yeah. Yeah. I just went and they didn't have it, and I was like, I, I, I was oh, no. literally in there every afternoon two semesters ago buying a new game every day. Yeah. <laughs> That's why my Switch collection's so big now. Yeah. And, like, oh, God. Yeah, no, I'm just. Now I'm like, fuck it. I'm saving for a Switch because I. Like, I need it. And I'm even debating maybe getting the shitty portable only Switch. That thing doesn't look shitty. It looks good. I mean, I just. I hate not being able to plug it in my. Kitchen. But that's. It's for the people who, who want to who didn't care about like dex doesn't yeah dex doesn't play console games he used to yeah he has like a tv to do it on but he prefers handheld either way so yeah. that's for people me, like him more, yeah me it's me it's more the thing of like if i buy that then i have no way to stream the switch games that i'm gonna want to stream yeah no if, why why would you why would you buy it don't buy it yeah buy the full price thing because it's it's the value is good for you but for people who don't stream for people who don't like 
For people who basically oh, loved it. Chopped off a oh, bit. sorry. For people who don't. Oh, no. What's wrong? I can't hear you no more. Mm. Can you hear me? Oh. Oh, yeah, you're right. Give me one second. Uh, technical hiccups. Good, good, good. How's this? Good, 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 good. good. Can you hear me? Oop, sorry about that, everybody. Technical difficulties. Just give me one second. This is very silly. Only 40 minutes in, too. Bruh. And I'm back. Hello. Oh, hello. Sorry about that. Woof, what happened? Uh, the, uh, the internet just dropped, like, uh, into the, uh, the lowest okay. uh, numbers, so it's good now. My wireless connection can sometimes go off. This is the first time it's happened during a podcast, though. Yeah. It's all good. All right, that's fine. J I, I, I thought your, like, laptop died or some shit, and I was like, no. No, no, don't worry about it. Okay. We're all good. Uh, I time-stamped it, time-stamped it, so we can chop that bit up. Perfect. Uh, I, I just cool, left cool, the whole cool. thing blank, but it's good. Anyway, um, okay, uh, let's, uh, well, I guess, uh, with all that shit out of the way, uh, I what did, what did you do for your week? What have you played? Oh yeah, because you played uh, you okay, played game. So I did play game. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Valhalla. Uh, I'm gonna open up with that. Valhalla is amazing. It's a probably one of the best visual novels I've ever played. I like Valhalla uh, a lot. I think I'm about halfway through uh, Nirvana, which is gonna be the secret uh, sequel. The secret. The secret. It's a secret. It's supposed to come is out. Is it secret? Uh, is it next safe? Year? Yeah. Is it secret? Oh no. Uh, but yeah, no, they do good things. Characters are interesting. Gameplay is fun. I like mixing the drinks. Um, it's neat. Uh, what else did I play? Um, not much. So, I got Outer Wilds. Yes, okay, let's uh, hear about Outer Wilds. Because this is a... Uh, I want to I preface this with... I went through the Epic Game Store to get Outer Wilds. Mm. Because I can't really play it on my fucking Xbox. Since my Xbox is in the living room and I can't play video games. Um, I <laughs> to this day, every time I open the Epic Game Store app, it is a black screen. So to download this thing, I just kind of frantically clicked all over the black screen until uh, I got to a login screen. I logged in, somehow managed to download the Outer Wilds, and ever since then, like, just haven't opened it. I made a shortcut for the outer wilds and was like what the fuck um i i i tried messaging the epic game store's twitter and everything and being like is there a way to fix this and radio silence i think actually the tweet got like removed um i don't know it might still be there i don't know who knows who cares fuck the epic game store fix your fucking website that's literally all you have to do this wouldn't be a problem no one would care if your site wasn't garbage um this being said, The Outer Wilds, uh, one of the best games I've played in years. <laughs> not to be confused with The Outer Worlds, a game that is about to come out that no, I don't yeah, think looks it's very it's good. Yet. I think it'll be fine, but we'll see. I'll play it for you and then be like, ah. Remain, it remains to be seen. J just like Cyberpunk. Just yeah, like there Cyberpunk. we go. You're going to you're gonna have to tell me if it is. Which I'm also very hyped for, but All right. that's just me. That's my aesthetic. Um, so yeah, the Outer Wilds, oh god, I, I have to fucking tiptoe around it a bit, because it is a game in which everything you need to beat the game is already in your hands, right? Uh, and giving away too much information kind of ruins some galaxy brain moments and, like, some cool pops that you're like, oh, what? That's fucking okay. Okay! Um, it's an exploration game where there are five planets five or six i can't remember um and you just you go explore and you find ruins of an ancient race that um tell you things and then you do the things uh the the story is essentially like you are a race of people on timber hearth which is just fucking earth okay it's like a wannabe earth with like very basic alien space sh shit um like your spaceship is made out of like wood mm -hmm. and like pro like it's, it's properly it's... rustic looking 
Yeah, it's very the the entire like, aesthetic we... of the game is basically like wood punk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 forest punk in space. <laughs> um, forest punk in space. That's a pretty good way of putting it, actually. Yeah. So yeah, your race of people uh, are kind of like, oh yeah, we like the space and want to know more. And there's this weird alien race that we don't know much about. Uh, and you're the first space explorer to have a translator. Oh. Uh, so you can read the things they write because up to this point, we found a bunch of weird text. But I don't, what the fuck is that? I don't know. I don't know how to read that. Uh, so we cracked the code, and now you are the one who has. You're you're the Mary Sue. Jesus, <laughs> you're the one. Uh, you're the one. So yeah, you just you go around from planet to planet, and each planet's really charming and has its own gimmick, and each gimmick is really, really fucking cool the first time you experience it. Um, some of them are really, like, I've never had so much anxiety playing a game. Really? Because the existential, oh god, floating around in space is very real. There's, uh, there's one thing that's a comic, right? It's called The Interloper. Okay. And it just kind of, it goes really close to the sun and then really fucking far away from the sun. And it's a very fucking small comet. But if you land on the wrong side of the comet and get out of your ship and go exploring, when it loops around the sun, your ship bounces and is just flung into the deep, dark depths of space. Oh, shit. And you're just there with your jetpack and your spacesuit like, well, uh, I don't know what to do with this now. <laughs> so you're just kind of exploring the thing and you're like, well, I gotta wait till I die. Um, God, yeah, no, there's a, there's another planet that is, has four tiny ass islands on it and all the rest is water, oceans, and with like tornadoes and typhoons and shit. And you're just kind of like, wow, this is fucking stressful. (laughs) Um, it's just all the planets, so much love went into this game. Like, I think the last time I saw this amount of love go into a game is either Shovel Knight or Hollow Knight. Oh, boy. Uh, that wasn't AAA. Uh, this is by Mobius, of course. Uh, Mobius Digital. They This is their first game, so I don't know why I said of course as if that name was supposed to mean anything to anyone. Um, and the fact that this is this first their first game really uh, gets me excited for anything else they mm-hmm. do. The writing's great. Uh, they breadcrumb the information you need to beat the game super well, wherein you can go, you can start at pretty much any planet. And every planet kind of has like, oh, how to do, how to solve this problem on this planet. We figured it out on this planet. Come over here and see. So you got to like, there's very back and forth thing to planets and learning new like planet mechanics kind of. Yeah. Um, it's fucking nuts. That's, well, that's, that sounds really it's, fucking good. It's, it's amazing. It kind of uh, sounds like what No Man's about... Sky should have been. Exactly. It's what No Man's Sky should have Not been. Not that No Man. Uh, I don't think. I'm at the point where I don't think No Man's Sky is a bad game anymore. Like, it's become a pretty great yeah, game. Yeah, no, they updated it. They, they, they updated it enough and they fixed their wrongs. It's just like, maybe you could have not hyped it up so much. Yeah, um, that would have been good. But yeah, like, like the, the thing too is like, between planets, there's like not that many kilometers so the universe is really small it doesn't feel shitty to go from planet to planet yeah it's really quick the planets are small you can like do north pole to south pole in like three minutes depending on the planet um yeah no it's just the breadcrumbing the writing the amount of love that went into this game the amount of detail uh there's information you receive that like you don't really notice at first and then right before something happens, you start noticing it more after you've read it, and you're like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> that's really fucking cool. And, like, again, I I love the fact that, like, the only thing you need to beat the game is fucking knowledge. That's it. That's just, you just, like need, a, your, you just every, need a good everything brain. Everything you need to beat the game is right there. It just tells you about the mechanics, and you're like, what? You can, What? And then you go do it, and you're like, ah, okay. It's gotta have a good okay, brain. Okay. It's gotta have a good yeah, brain, bro. Like, there's just every. I want to say, like, if you're exploring, like, really properly and, like, really just taking in everything, I want to say that, like, every 30 minutes, say, 
you have this moment of what? Oh, uh, okay. It's it's amazing. Uh, I have nothing but praise for this game. I think it's like in my top games that came out this year. That's so good. It's it's nuts. Or maybe it came out in 2018. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the sad thing about this game is a, of course, the baffling similarity in titles to Outer Worlds and Outer Wilds. Yeah. Um. So like you know it kind of gets misconstrued and confused. Um. And this pretty much was under the radar, I want to say, up until it came out on the Xbox Game Pass, and that's when the noise started being made. And uh, I will not stop making noise for this company to be successful, because <laughs> fuck. Now this is Masi like, Oka from Heroes' company, I believe, isn't it? Uh, possibly, I'm unsure. I, I want to just look into that one second. Yeah, uh, it is Mobius Digital uh, Team. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It is the guy from Heroes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah Masioka, yeah. founder. Just... Yeah. Alex yeah, Alex it's... Beecham, creative lead. Lone Verno, creative lead. Wesley Martin, art director. Jeffrey Yu, engineer. Lara Coulson, lead artist. Logan Verhoof, Verhoof, tech artist. Uh, Eilish Lambertstein, three D artist. Andrew Paralo, audio lead, and Ian Jacobson, concept artist. Yeah, well, very it's this very team, small very, team with a very beautiful very game. Good game. Wow. It's. And that's the thing too. It's very charming. Uh, it's it's really fun to look at. Everything looks pretty. Um, it's uh, it, like uh, you need to play it so that we can have like a spoiler cast or some shit because there's just it's so satisfying. This seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I um, I would I would I would comes to the I would games. love that this comes to Switch because I'd I'd love to play that game. It looks fucking yeah. amazing. Uh, that's mostly what I did with my week was just any downtime was spent exploring space and having galaxy brain moments and being like, wow, this is one of the best games I've played in years. That's really dope. Um, and apparently the ending is one of the best endings also, but I, I don't know yet. I'll know soon. Uh, I'm about 20 hours in. I think it's like 25 to 30 hour game. It feel like I can feel the end coming, right? Yeah. Like I, I, I can see what the game wants me to do to beat it now. And you know you're you're in the last there. quarter. Everybody everybody yeah, knows yeah, what yeah, it feels yeah, like, sure. you know? Yeah. And it's also one of those it's it's definitely one of those games where like you see the end and you're like, Cool, oh no. Cause this game's replay value is zero. Yeah. That because once you know you you know it's like <laughs> if you there, don't know like a randomizer. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh so yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. Uh, it has been one of the more satisfying video games I've ever played. Seems like it's gonna be really really uh, cool. I I can't wait to yeah. I can't wait to give that a try if I ever possibly can because it looks pretty fantastic. Yeah, I mean at worst like when we do the River City Girls thing. Oh, like, River City Girls! Oh boy, I should have beat it by then. Um, yeah. I, I I can't wait to play River City Girls. Holy fuck! It looks so good. It looks really That's good. That's another game that looks like it had a bunch of love pumped in. Oh it. yes. I watched I watched uh, Liam and Matt play it, and uh, not too much of it because I also I want some cool pops, but uh it looks so good. <laughs> it's 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 gonna be just mwah, mwah. I that's that's that game is gonna be fun. All right, well, uh, weeks are done. Now we've got so much fucking news, bro. Yes, so much news. That Nintendo Direct. Overwatch, who cares? <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, I, people... It feels, it feels a little late. In those it's a, it's a little late in its days. life. Overwatch 2 is probably a thing that's coming relatively soon. Which is dumb. I know. It's so dumb. What is? You can just okay. add, just uh, add to it. Don't make a sequel. Yeah, just because you don't have. Uh, but they're definitely yeah. doing that. Um, but yeah. there's. If Zarya gets in Smash, though, I'm good. That'd be pretty fucking. If we get cool. Zarya in Smash, that'd be cool. Like that would be a pop. But I don't, you know, whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, there's uh, Luigi's tons, Mansion tons of 3. news to fucking get through. Yeah. Uh, Luigi's Mansion Three. Yeah, which looks really that. fucking good still, and I cannot wait to get it. And I. Yes. I would love for them to port Luigi's Mansion two and one to the Switch. I know they're. Yeah. I can. I have. Two I have. I have one and won't. two for the 3DS, but I'd. I'd love to have them on Switch. Yeah, I. I like. 
Oh, yeah, that's another thing. I tried, actually, because I was excited for Luigi's Mansion 3 to finally beat Luigi's Mansion 2. Yeah. Uh, only to discover that I dropped my 3DS and my R trigger button oh. doesn't work anymore, <laughs> which is the vacuum button. Yep. So I'm like, oh. Well, that's unplayable now. Uh, yay. Yeah. Oh, you can't, I can't, and I can't even remap it to RZ or anything. Oh, and I'm Jesus like, oh, Christ. Fuck my life. Fuck, really? Uh, so that sucks. That yeah, sucks dick, I, bro. Holy fuck. I think that game released before the Circle Pad Pro. Yeah, it did. So, that that was a that was a that yeah. was a launch game for the console pretty much yeah uh shit. and like that's the thing too is like i just have a bunch of games in my library now that it's like wow if i have to press our trigger i can't play that game anymore oh, fuck um, oh well so yeah mm. and i'm not about to buy another fucking 3ds no. or whatever like i'm fucking over it all right is, uh, well that kind of stinks yeah. uh okay well let's see tokyo game show is uh is coming up soon the 12th to the 50 yeah and that's that's gonna be i mean that's gonna be something we're gonna yeah. get some more I'm ff shit thinking about streaming that yeah that would be fun that'd be a good idea yeah streaming it over on the uh, scratch me silly plays youtube on the yeah. and on the this the the uh, twitch tv the, the twitch twatch twitch um, um yeah there's definitely gonna be a slew of ff7 I'm fucking hyped for that uh, Norman Reedus and his funky feet. Is yeah, a- 80 guys. minutes I'm of death. I'm starting to not be able. 80 minutes of Death Stranding uh, gameplay. 80 fucking. I'm starting minutes. to not be able to to uh, not get hyped for that. Yeah, game. it looks fucking. Because when it was first like announced and the trailers kept coming, I was like, okay. And by the third trailer, I was like, this isn't really telling me anything. I, uh, I'm gonna not pay attention to it for a bit. Now that we now, now we know starts, like almost like, too much about it. Yeah, like, stuff's coming out, and I'm like, okay, you know what, I'm interested. Again. Everybody's like, is this going to be a walking simulator? Fuck you. Of course not. Fuck you. And even if it was, did you not play PT? I think the man knows what he's doing. Like, he's, he, he knows this, bro. He knows what this is. Anyway, watch it be a fucking shit show. Ridiculous. I hope not. Trails of Mana looks good. Yeah, Trails of Mana looks fucking fantastic. This is a mana game that had never been released it's getting not just a full remake like uh like secret of mana did but uh also like the original is getting ported so yeah. there's there's gonna be a mana collection and i'm gonna get the shit out of that because hell yeah. mana games are great and the character models look so oh good. they're there's beautiful so waifus and husbandos oh it looks fucking beautiful i yeah. i love those fucking games and then uh xenoblade chronicles is getting fucking ported to the switch and it's getting a remaster and holy fuck that game looks beautiful oh my yeah. god that that's probably the best looking game on the wii it pushed that fucking console to like its furthest possible tech limits and yeah uh on the 3ds it looks pretty good too uh but They've fully remastered it, like, to the point where it looks just as remastered as, like, FF8 looks now, which I also got and I cannot wait to play. Yeah, which is fun. Yeah, that game looks amazing now. Um, But, yeah, like, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition's coming out. It includes cut content that was, uh, like, literally they just could not fit into that game because, of course, they couldn't. It's such a... That game is already full. Um, And it looks just beautiful like they the trailer they showed uh on the nintendo direct uh kind of touches back on like a scene from the original trailer of the game where shulka's lying down yeah. and a dragonfly kind of lies next to him and his turn he turns his face and he doesn't look like fucking dog shit he yeah. looks good and the environment's I mean, like even, beautiful even the dog shit even the dog shit version still looks pretty yeah good. for the wii like, it looks amazing yeah um, the wheel, the yeah, wheel, I'm the wheel. To finally like play that game. that game is amazing. I, I, I've never played it. I, I kept looking at the the 3DS version and just kind of being like, eh. the 3DS version is a good port. It's a good way to play the game. Yeah, it's just I'm I, I got really sick of playing like 3D games that weren't Monster Hunter <laughs> on a 720p game fucking screen. Like, that's that's very that kind really... calling that screen 720p yeah <laughs> it's a this 3ds screen is by far the worst part about it it's not great i mean like the only the only game i really forced myself to go back to is uh dream drop distance yeah monster hunter and like but those like that's just 3d games yeah like, pokemon's fine well, i mean pokemon's 3d game, but it's not like camera control is very important right? yeah exactly it's, it's a fixed camera angle in pokemon so it's fine but like 
even going back to Dream Drop Distance, which is like that game look the game games. looks fine, and it's one of my favorite games in the great. series too. It's just the depth of field is shit. It, it's assy. It's really assy. It's not great. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's kind of meh. uh, it's it's a pity, but what can you do? You know. Yeah. Uh, but now I can play it on a Switch so when I get a Switch. There we go, and it's gonna be fun. Uh, so much other shit happened. Uh. Let, Tokyo let, Mirage Sessions. Let me, I, I just have them all brought up. I'm going to go through them. Digimon Story okay, Cyber over. Sleuth Complete Edition is coming out for the Switch. Digimon is Story Cyber Sleuth. Yeah. But it looks... Yeah? Yeah, it is. Oh, really? Yes, it is. I thought it was... For Switch and PC okay. via Steam, October 18th. What? Yeah. Steam? You can play it. I can play a Digimon game? You can game. play Digimon Story Cyber ah! Sleuth Definitive Edition. Oh, yeah. Uh, it wasn't on the Nintendo Direct, but uh, Super Robot Wars 5 is also Yes, there. that's true, and those games are fun. Yeah, and, like, the only thing that Direct was missing, like, if a Super Robot Wars game ever gets in a Nintendo Direct, I'll lose my shit. Not because, like, like the pop will be good and I, I like, I want to play those games and shit, but just, like, Super Robot Wars being in a, like, mainstream presentation would be nice. It would be nice, yeah, totally. Deadly Premonition 2. What the Which fuck? I can't. Ap- Everyone, I knew. Like, I knew Swery was working uh, on something for the Switch. Yeah. Also, shout out to Swery. He like follows us on Twitter, uh, which is weird. He was yeah, true. Yeah, weirdly enough, fuck. follows our Twitter. Okay. But um. Alright. Yeah. Uh, shout outs to Swery. But uh, newly announced Deadly Premonition two. That's gonna be fucking fun. I I I cannot fucking believe that that's happening. I know, it's nuts, because, like, the, f- what I thought was that the rights were so split up. Yeah. It's like Donkey Kong 64, where it's like, oh, this game's never coming back, or and nothing's I mean, ever happening with this do game. It, do we really want that and game back anyway? Do- no, Donkey... No, that game no, is, that game is it. shit. Just, <laughs> it was a... Yeah, it's not great. It was just a, a, like, comparison, where, like, the rights are so fucked that it's like, oh, yeah, you want to remaster? No, it's not gonna... Why would... Why would... No. And then... Not only are we getting a remaster, but we're getting a sequel. That's and that's just insane. I I'm and I cannot right. wait to get that original game because guess what? I've never played the pro- properly played Deadly Premonition myself. Oh, you are missing some shit. Enjoy your chimpanzee swirls. Uh, very, 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 very influential PS One RPG from 1997 called Moon, which I think is yes. one of the games that Undertale is kind of in. You know takes a lot of cues from uh oh no for is sure, coming for sure. to the switch uh eShop for october 10th uh only in japan right oh, now we're getting it at some point but we will but be mean, getting can, it i know what we will you can you can futz it too where you can get the japanese things anyway. yeah exactly and this game oh. is it's basically it, at the time people were like it's an anti-rpg because all of like the conventions of rpgs are actively turned over on their heads it's like why is the hero going around killing like innocent monsters that didn't do shit why are you going into people's houses and stealing shit from their fucking drawers like it's yeah. it all of that shit is turned over but yeah it's it's an isekai story about a guy who's sucked into a video game called moon world and basically he has to kind of go through and do like a typical rpg story but um after the hero's already been yeah there. the prime the primary point of the game kind You've of like un- clean up yeah. the mess the point of the game kind of like undertale is to is to make wise decisions that kind of affect the the state of the characters in this world's happiness whether or not you choose mm-hmm. to kill them or befriend them or spare them or that's the point of the game and you you win by collecting something called love and you 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 dis, you beat the game by accumulated accumulating love uh dmc2 is coming to switch for some reason well i don't know why it's not bundled no one's gonna buy this it's, by it's because physical copy will have all of them bundled together let's be real uh, maybe. i think that's gonna happen it's because dante's coming to smash bitch i i can't wait yeah it's the second that gets announced like I'm it's, definitely I, it's inevitable at, oh every direct inevitable from now on um and days that I'm working, the directs are happening. I'm gonna duck the direct and stay off the internet all day, mm. and just kind of come and be home, surprised. Boot up the fucking YouTube and stream it for like reactions and shit. But oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. fucking uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Big trailer for that. Uh, yeah, looks really, really f- looks really fucking good. Like the 
it's kind of changing the entire di- dynamic of Animal Crossing by also making it a yeah. crafting game. But the last yeah, couple I mean, of Animal Crossing also, games have had crafting elements to them, so... There's also just the fact that, like, are you going to have other villagers since this is a deserted island, or is this just going to be, like... People would be moving. People would be moving there. Yeah, yeah there is. There is. I don't remember. There is classic Animal Crossing experiences coming to life in okay. new ways, as the show says, okay, as the good. trailer says. But yeah, it, lo- um, it looks really fucking good. It yeah, looks. It's the I'm, best the series of has ever looked visually. I'm excited to play this and only this for like three months, and then never play it again. Yeah, I have to say, <laughs> two of my favorite Assassin's Creed games, basically two of the only games in that series I've ever cared about, are also coming to the Switch. Yeah, Assassin's Creed The Rebel Collection is collecting Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, a.k.a. the Assassin's Creed game that basically made Ubisoft reconsider what the fuck they were doing. Finally, and Assassin's uh, yeah, and games. Assassin's Creed Rogue, which is a, an underrated game that actually mostly takes place in like the, the you know, the Northeast. So like yeah. mostly in and around like Gaspé Z and New York City and like you play as an assassin who has become a Templar and you're going around yeah. killing other assassins. It's, it's an interesting game. Uh, I, I like that it, like you can go to fucking Newfoundland and it. it's really funny and you're Irish in it as well, which is always good to be a good Irishman. Uh, yeah. Star Wars Jedi Knight Two Jedi outcast is being ported to PS4 and switch. Which uh, is really weird. And Jedi Academy is coming in early 2020. These games are fucking like over 16 years old. Yeah, but they're good. They're, they're really they're good. pretty good. Like they're the best Star Wars games. But... Yeah, they're 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 pretty good. I have to say, they also feature yeah. gyro aiming for the Joy-Con, which is kind of cool. What? Yep. Huh. Uh, but uh, Game X Machina. It looks okay, I guess. Uh, I yeah. I I've I'm not gonna play them again, but I they're fun. You know, it's, they're fun Star Wars games. I just the thing that's disappointing about playing old Star Wars games to me is always that it's like, yeah, this is the old canon though. And yeah, it's, it doesn't exist. It, it's not. It's not that it doesn't exist anymore that makes me upset. It's just kind of like, but the new canon, in my opinion, is kind of better in a lot of ways. And I yeah. just thinking about the old canon, it makes me like, oh yeah, I remember that uh, Chewbacca got a moon dropped on him and he fucking died. Uh, whoever killed Chewbacca, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't drop moons on my. Uh, Famicom Tante Club One and Two is being remade for the Switch. Uh, they're due out in 2020 in Japan. Uh. I love those games. Uh, the development staff who worked on the original games are actually supervising the studio of mages who are making them. Uh, and they're going to be fully modern adventure games, but without encroaching on, as they say, the flavor of the original titles. So the graphics mm-hmm. and background music are completely redone. The dialogue scenes are fully voiced. Uh, these are very old mystery point-and-click games from... Um, the uh the the nes i've played a really or the the famicom i should say i played a really good english translation of the first famicom tante club on my famicom emulator and i loved it i thought it was this is like a great nintendo first party made adventure game and it plays very well and then the second the second game you play as the assistant to a detective and you investigate the murder of a female high school student uh, that one is really really fun, but it's it's really really fucking cool. It, they they have kind of weird Twin Peaksy mystery vibes. Yeah. Uh, they're b- much like Deadly Premonition. Yeah, but but Twin Peaks is also the biggest shit ever in Japan, so it makes sense. Even fucking uh, yeah. Link's Awakening is directly influenced by Twin Peaks. It's exactly yeah, what yeah. that game is like I mean, for. There's so much. It's so fucking cool. That is Twin Peaks. I should probably watch Twin Peaks. You Ben, you would love Twin Peaks. I don't know why you haven't. <laughs> I don't know. You, I the the list is long. Twin Peaks is is you can watch one episode a night though and, and enjoy it. Yeah, it's not you know it's half an hour. It's not so bad. Yeah, I might start. Uh, that. Pokemon Sword and Shield. So many new details. So many new Pokemon. Oh my fuck! Oh, I just knocked the mic. Look at that teacup. You can drink them. I'm, don't. I'm do gonna it, do though. it. Don't do it. Uh, don't drink his tea. I'm drinking his tea. He said he'll he'll oh, let people no. who really like him drink his tea. Oh, gross. yeah, that's how that works. <laughs> uh, so there's a <laughs> should, there's a lot of new don't... info on some of the gameplay elements. I mean, there's two new Pokemon. There's Poltegeist and there's Cramorant. Cramorant is a uh, Cramorant is a pelican who uh, eats fish and then like sucks them shoots and shoots them, them back you. like bullets. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I like. And uh, Poltegeist is a teapot ghost who lives in a teapot, and it is cute. 
He is a which I love. He is baby. He's, my, he's he's on my team already. Yeah, he's really really. But cute. I'm not gonna drink his tea because I'm not a fucking freak. I'm drink it. So uh, <laughs> don't you? fully customizable character like the previous couple of games, but to an even further extent with shit like makeup and like oh my god there there's so many options for how the characters can look in this game it the, like you i will just make me again like i did in the other games and it's fun yeah, yeah, to yeah. play as me uh but i'm definitely playing the i'm like definitely playing the female Pokemon. character uh, oh yeah for sure always. she's so cute mm. uh, i actually just started playing moon uh, yeah that because i never game good i never i never like got into and it. game good like i bought it played a bit and kind of fell off so. game. but i've got that pokemon itch. game good i've heard game, game good. good uh yeah right. you there's this thing called pokemon camp which is basically the new pokemon ami but this time it's like a full yeah. mode and it's like a mix of pokemon uh pokey ami and fucking n- n- uh the camps from uh sapphire yeah. and ruby uh like secret bases yeah it's a mix yeah, of yeah. secret bases pokemon ami and also nintendogs in my opinion i wish it was more secret bases i like the nintendogs aspect because the different pokemon interact with one another now yeah that's, that's fucking true. cool and you can play them with you play Man, with them and uh, bring nintendogs back bring nintendogs back uh yeah those would be I'm, pretty interesting i miss i miss my spark uh, and also uh this is just particularly for uh, me because i'm a big bitch who likes curry but uh yeah, basically hundreds of curry the, you could just make curry in the game for your pokemon why is it just curry well though? you know why because in the uk why? curry is the most popular food oh, okay and, i mean Fair enough. you know but this also kind of low-key confirms yeah. colonialism yeah. is canon in pokemon yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay i was about to say yeah those those yeah. immigrants from the region vaguely analogous to india uh brought over curry <laughs> to galar we don't we don't talk to them. <laughs> no, we, we're not, we're not going to know <laughs> We don't let them in our restaurant. But yeah, you, you, make, you make fucking curry for them, and everybody yeah. has favorite flavors of curry, kind of like with poffins and with uh, uh, poke blocks and all of that shit like that, and that's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, the wild area... You eat the curry with the Pokemon. The wild area looks really good. Yeah, the like running around Pokemon look great. Yeah, uh, the, the environments in the game look beautiful. I don't know what people are saying about it looking shitty they yeah they look the like, wild area looks rougher obviously because it's being kind of rendered in real time but all the stuff yeah. that's pre-rendered looks as good as like a mo- the most modern tales games and look. like the thing too is like i imagine this is still pretty early-ish footage yeah and the oh. buildings are all proportionate and and good sizes now like i mean we'll have to wait to see when the game comes out it could still be a train wreck and if it is whatever i don't think it will be a train wreck you can take little selfies uh, and have cards of you, and you trade cards of people. Speaking of little things, I like little things. Game Freak is also doing Little Town Hero, which looks really fucking cool because it just looks like a deconstructed card game. And as we all know, I fucking love card. Yeah, this games. bitch loves his TCGs. That sounded sarcastic, no, but that's this not, bitch that's loves not, his TCGs. Not, I do, but only like I don't. The thing too is like it's not even card games i hate like i don't really like card games i like video games with like chain of memories or metal gear acid those are the kind of card games i like and this looks vaguely deconstructed of that because every action seems to have a value and uh attack and defense value Mm -hmm. and the boss or enemy whatever also seems to have the same thing so like it's clearly like use the card to break his defensive things and then you can hit him yeah or what i don't know I don't like. I don't know how it's gonna work. I just know that it looks kind of card gamey, and that I'm like, ooh. ooh that. Mm. Um, yeah. I'm also gonna pick up. Uh, it's a little irrelevant, but Slay the Spire and uh, Steam World Hand of Gilgamesh. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Cause those look. That that's the kind of fucking shit that. That's my shit. Yeah. Uh huh. This my shit. <laughs> card games. I don't know. So it's basically it's got a battle system that requires you to kind of think of new strategies on the fly like a card game yeah uh uh you can somehow go to other villagers as like an assist attack which looks weird like i'm not sure how that's gonna work yeah oh oh, yeah all the enemies are boss monsters there's no it's kind of the game 
is kind of like a boss rush where there's no weak monsters to kind of grind against. There's yeah. there's no grinding in the game. Uh, everything, all the progression is is like balanced essentially, so that yeah. like you can do shit like properly, uh, which is nice. Uh, the soundtrack is composed by uh, none other than Toby Fox. Getting a lot of push, Toby Fox, by Nintendo recently. Yeah, uh, and uh, as this is a, something that Gematsu says, which I guess is part of the key features of the game, it has compact story progression for people who like want to pick up a game, play it for a couple hours, and put it down, like, uh, which is yeah, kind of a nice thing. That's something that I like yeah, when RPGs a, do. There's a, there's a lot of games that don't do that, uh, which kind of sucks. I mean, like. I don't want every game to do that, obviously, but, like, I do like my Into the Breaches where you can pick up, uh, literally just close the window and then open it again the next day and you're exactly where you were and you're like, yeah. So this game looks really, really fun. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. It's going to be a $24 eShop game, so it's not a big game. Um, no. But uh, for, like, a little side thing for Game Freak to do, uh, it it looks rather good. I yeah, a, lot of people are, a lot of people are being very hard on it, but I'm like, it's, yeah, a, like... it's a 24 buck game, dude. Like it's what do you think yeah. you're getting? It's it's a it's Game Freak who are people think of Game Freak as being like having big Nintendo money. People don't realize yeah, that it's only not, because still budgets. no, they're that's not how it is. Game Freak is still effectively a small second party studio. Yeah, and they are they're not a big studio. They're not Pokemon. No, po- sure they, make, they make big games. I'm sure they make bank, but like yeah, like come on guys. So anyway. Uh, Little Town Hero looks really interesting. Hopefully, it's fun. Uh, I'm gonna get it to try it out. Uh, I'll yeah. see what the reception's like on it. But yeah, it's interesting. Fucking now, Kirby Clash. Yes. Uh, you describe what it is. I'm gonna go. Pee, okay. And then we can talk about it. So Kirby Clash is essentially think a mix of Gauntlet and Kirby and Monster Hunter. It's a boss rush game where you play. Uh, multiple people as a team of Kirby's with different uh, copy abilities and you craft weapons and spend material to basically make more weapons and armor and you can play local multiplayer a uh, whole bunch of multiplayer you can be a mage you can be a healer you could be like a, a heavy and you can be like a, a knight and you basically play monster hunter slash gauntlet with Kirby it looks really really fucking fun uh but it's also like really simple. It's it's like a boss rush Kirby game, and it looks like an interesting kind of experiment. It's a free to start game. Uh, I am bad. Yeah, it's free to start, and it looks good. I said it's basically Gauntlet meets Kirby meets Monster Hunter. Uh, I feel like Gauntlet might be a little much. Well, in that you're, it's like it's a co op kind of. Yeah. Well, I mean that's just Monster. Yeah, Hunter. I, I guess it's like Monster Hunter. Anyway, it looks interesting. It looks like it's gonna be fun to play with friends. Uh, it does look good. It looks kind of like Monster Hunter if Monster Hunter took place on a Smash arena. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, like, there's even like the quest board even kind of looks like fucking it, it, Monster. Yeah, Hunter. it does kind of look like the Monster um, Hunter quest board. You got the shop guy right there. You got your different gears that you get from beating different monsters. It's just I don't know. It's cute. Um. And I'm definitely gonna play it when I get a Switch. Yeah, free to start. Oh, the sinking, the uh, sinking city is coming to Switch. Is yes, it? it is. And it's a deluxe. Uh, it's a deluxe edition that includes the worshippers well, of the Necronomicon DLC. Do you the sinking city or uh, the, the sinking city? Call of Cthulhu. both of them. Oh yeah, what the fuck? The, but call of Call of Cthulhu is kind of meh, and the sinking city is really good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to play the call sinking city because I've heard nothing but good right. things about that game. Yeah. Uh. Dragon Quests 1, 2, and 3 are coming to the Switch in Japan. Uh, bring them here, you Which cowards. We'll get them eventually. Bring them yeah, here, you cowards. Please. please. Uh, because if they do well in Japan, we'll send them over. Doom 64 so. being ported to the Switch. Which is neat, but I don't know the difference between Doom 64 and the computer Doom. Like, I don't know what that is. I, I don't know either. Uh, I, I absolutely have no fucking idea. I what think we were too is. young for that. Yeah, shit. I don't know what that is. And but that's neat. Before we get to the two major pieces of news uh, that we had some shit to say, Tokyo Mirage Sessions hashtag FE Encore Edition coming to Switch. Yes, this game is I this game I flew totally you. under the fucking radar. Yes, I felt you go yes, yes. as hard as I yes. went yes because like uh, this is a game that 
I have wanted to play, uh, but as the fate of the Wii U, uh, had, like, I think there's three games, maybe, there's probably more than three, but the three off the top of my head right now that I want to play, but I can't because I don't have a Wii U, and I will never get a Wii U unless it is given to me for free as a The gift Wonderful 101. Someone. Yeah, Wonderful 101, Bayo 2, and hashtag FE. And this game. Now, Bayo 2, I have, and I've played, and I love, because it's on Switch. Yeah, because it's Switch. Uh, but... Now we're getting fucking Tokyo Mirage Sessions hashtag FE, which is this really interesting experimental game that was marketed as a crossover of kind of uh, SMT and Fire Emblem. And calling it Tokyo Mirage Session, which is just SMT backwards, yeah. is the best. It's so good. It's I don't know how to describe it, but I definitely wouldn't describe it as a mix of Fire Emblem and SMT. It's a totally I call unique it more game. SMT and like it's and by SMT, I mean, it, it's Persona. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it's not Shin Megami Tensei. It is Persona. No, no, it's Persona. Yeah, it's Persona with Fire Emblem. Yeah, it, where your personas are Fire Emblem characters and also idols. Yeah, but it is which is uh, such a weird good game. Yeah, um, I'm excited to finally. Play so it. am I. I. I cannot wait, and it's it's. There's a the, bunch of new content coming to it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, more characters. That new song looks. Oh, good. it looks so um, fucking fun. And it's so j poppy. I love my j. So do I. I like I, I. If I don't always love j pop as a musical genre, I love it as an aesthetic. And this yeah. goes so fucking hard into it. It looks great. It looks really fucking great, and. uh uh right before we get to the smash stuff uh ikumi nakamura who's the creative director for ghostwire tokyo uh yes. has actually left uh, tango yeah she uh she came out on twitter and was like hey i've been here for nine years i think it's time that this journey ends uh i've learned from a bunch of talented people that i work with and respect contact me if you want to work with me to which the internet said koji pro koji pro. yep yep um which would be great. Like, honestly, if that happens, I fuck it. Like, I hope that happens. Um, the thing that's a little weird is that Tokyo, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo is not out. Yeah, it's not done. Like, it's, I, I guess it's effectively almost done. The th yeah, because the thing I'm thinking is, because, like, look, Nakamura wrote uh, story scenarios, character settings, and design character concept art, some creature concept art. And she she did everything that isn't programming. Art. Yeah, so she, I think her job is mostly done. Yeah, she she's a she's a scenario she writer, like, uh, dis yeah, character like, concept designer, like you know. It's all very early things, and I think they're all past. Yeah, it, and I don't think they're planning to change too much. Uh, she also tweeted, which is not in this game Atsu article because I was following it uh, closer because I was like, what happened? Why? Um, she seems to be fair to have left on good terms. Okay. Uh, like there seems to be no vitriol or any bad happenings um she tweeted something about uh i just i i wasn't happy like uh, god what was it uh this isn't verbatim so don't yeah don't like, quote you on this i think it's verbatim yeah. but on on short of it was like i wasn't happy anymore i'm looking for a more uh open world experience with less fences so i think that maybe a lot of our ideas were getting shot down and it was really bummed maybe out. yeah and ta uh, tango as a company i get the feeling they have a pretty they have a pretty strong sense of vision for what they want their projects to be, and people who kind of diverge yeah. outside of that, maybe their ideas aren't as welcome. Yeah. And she is, and, uh, like, by by reputation in the industry, somebody with a lot of ideas. Yeah, I mean, she worked on Okami. She's yep. the uh, world The environment designer, designer yeah. She did concept yeah, art for Bayo. She did some stuff for Evil Within and Evil Within 2. Like, at Tango, yeah. um, as you do as you do so, uh, so she's she's a pretty cool like and i guess in it, yeah. she's an artist she is an artist she, she's a name in the industry that like until the e3 when like everyone had the pop and was like that's my waifu yeah. um like kind of went under the radar unless you were just put, like looking at names but now there's like a whole charismatic aspect to her too that people are like all right this is like this was a name to keep an eye out for the industry, but now it's easier to know what that name entails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, because uh, I think maybe there's idea clashes with Mikami. 
because uh, he's at Tango now. Too, yeah. Right. Um, so I don't know if she, like I, I'm just excited for whatever she's working on next. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, there didn't really seem to be any vitriol or any bad blood. It just seemed like, hey, I was getting bummed out by not being able to do the things I wanted to do. So, and I've been here for fucking nine years. I'm good. (laughs) She's like, no, it's super. uh, She came out to on Twitter because a lot of people were like, but what happened? Like, is there any bad like thing? And she's like, no, no. Firstly, don't ask professionals on Twitter why they leave their job. If they're not telling you why, is that not just a little entitled and rude? Yeah. Well, also the fact that she did tell us. Yeah. Like her tweet was straight up like, I wasn't I happy. I want to do something else. It's the end of the journey. Yeah. I learned from talented people and like, I respect It's them. just more than a little rude to push for more. Yeah. Like she's given you her, yeah. her answer, guys. I mean, even in the comments, someone's like, I got a feeling that maybe sexual harassment or something. And she was like, no. I was like, what do you mean? No, 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 no. No. Yeah, that's. That's no! that's that's like that's a little don't say don't, things, don't put that don't on say people. baseless fucking comments yeah don't like, pre- don't especially if it's not just like I'm leaving Tango Grimworks like that's that's do you know what you're implying when you say that you're in, you're yeah. accusing people of shit that they didn't do yet please yeah it's nuts um yes yeah, so that was yeah, a no, little it wacky seems like there's no bad blood there it seems uh like it was her choice she didn't get forced out uh, which is good that would have been bad yeah. <laughs> Yep. Um, no, she just she yeah. actively chose on her own volition to leave because she wanted to seek out a more fulfilling position somewhere, and yeah, that's and now she'll go work on Death Stranding. That's cool. Too. And now, the final little bit of news before we end off this episode of Game Punks. Uh, big big Smash reveal character news. So we've gotten our we've gotten our fucking cool bonus characters now. So I got my husband. We've got we've gotten our guys because I got my my fucking Dragon Quest. And yeah. Ben has gotten his Fatal Fury. Bones. Yeah, which was nuts. I still... Like, I... Because there was a leak that it was going to be an SNK character. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I had, I had a feeling it was like, going to be... If it was going to be anybody, it was it's gonna it was going to be Terry. But... It's got to be Terry. I was also like... But, but SNK does have a lot of popular, like, kind of yeah. mascot characters for their games. Because they have Samurai Showdown. And they have all... Metal Slug. Metal, like, it could have been the dude from Metal Slug. You know, it, there's... It, there were possibilities. It, it, there's no way. No way. There, things that things cool. could have happened. I think the pop would have been... I think the pop would have been just as good if it was Metal Slug. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so Terry's in. I'm very excited. I love... I love my brain damaged his bond he is such a cutie he's the he's best. he's you know that it's boy. like pretty much canon that it, he just has like some form of speech impediment or brain oh damage. yeah i mean the dude's been getting his head kicked in for fucking decades yeah uh, no but like even there's uh in k i don't remember which kof but like everyone's speaking normally but terry's still like are you okay come on yeah burn knuckle and you're like oh, oh poor baby you. your brain hurt yeah you uh yeah, he's a I want, he does he's a good boy i want him and ken to have a good they time. they should they should, yeah they should have a good time with each other we're like we are both blonde americans like yeah. uh, i am blonde american come on burn knuckle are you okay <laughs> oh poor it. baby anyway. uh and then the pop that the internet cared more about than they should have yeah in my opinion yeah i mean no to be fair really fucking cool i was hype but i don't share the sentiment that this means that sans is in the game. no so yeah uh basically <laughs> undertale is getting a mini little crossover with um with the rest of uh this series and we're seeing uh we're seeing some like undertale stuff come to smash so we're getting Megalovania yeah. is attractive. Play a new a which, new remix of, of Megalovania, course. which sounds really good. Um, and yeah. we're getting uh, Sans as like a Hello. as a costume. Yeah, so we're getting cosplay Sans, not real Sans. Yeah. and uh, to, just to make it super clear, again, I think it's really cool that Undertale is in Smash. I think it's 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 uh, weird that people are saying that as uh, Sans is a character in the game. No, Sans is a skin for the Me Gunner. Yes, and it's a very good. Skin. Yeah, it looks great. It's as good. As the Goemon, yeah, skin. all of all of those skins are great. Goemon is in the game. Fucking, we're yeah, we're not like, say, we're not uh, saying Goemon's in the game because there's a Goemon skin. 
No. I think it's neat that Goemon is getting representation. I think it's neat that Undertale is getting fucking shit in there. Uh, but until Sans has his cool final smash where the screen turns into the bullet hell screen that you have to deal with when you try to kill Sans, uh, it's not in the game to me. And I feel that sentiment about the Zero costume. I feel that sentiment about the Proto Man costume. Yeah, the, like all the costumes are just they look fine. Fucking, they're good. Yeah. I'm happy. Oh, it's not in the wait. Game. You lost. Speaking speaking of Zero, I just wanted to put this oh, out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my all of my favorite Mega Man games are being ported in one fucking package to the Switch and two other consoles. So Battle Network's uh, not there. No, I'm talking about yeah. uh, Mega Man Zero, the good games. No, I I, I know. But I, I, lo- I like Battle Network. They're fun. They're they're good RPGs. But uh, also, like, it's weird to say Mega Man RPGs are good. Uh, but um, they yeah. mostly have been. Command Mission is not bad. Um, mm-hmm. But yes, uh, they're fully porting all four Mega Man Zero games and both Mega Man ZX games, which are Common Rider meets Mega Man, to, and yes. also direct story sequels to the Zero series, to the fucking... Um, uh switch into creates made those games they are good fucking games into creates usually makes basically really good games for the most part as long as you're not talking about My, but know. mighty number no. nine is bad because no, 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 say it, because say it. of <laughs> it's bad because cons comes because of con concept that's we yeah. know this the the problem with the game isn't what inti did on it inti are good for the most part uh and yeah. uh i mean they did gunvolt those two games are spiritual successors to the zero and zx games and they play really good uh, really those fun. games are great i have both of them i have the two pack for the switch fucking dope this is the second game i ever bought for the switch uh i i had mario odyssey and i had Gunvolt. but um yeah these games are coming they're bringing back all the cool stuff from the Mega Man zero collection for ds which is a great uh bang for its buck in its own right i got that it was like fucking 30 bucks when it came out it's all four Mega Man zero games uh the Mega Man zero collection i have both Mega Man zx games on ds as well Love these fucking games to death. They're some of my favorite fucking games ever made. Uh, and I played the shit out of them as a kid. I played mm-hmm. the shit out of them. And I know them like the back of my hand. Like, they're super familiar to me. So I cannot fucking wait to replay them with all this new shit added in. Uh, it's going to be great. I think it's... the I couldn't have asked for a more fun thing for them to do for me. So yeah, that's going to be fucking dope, bro. I can't wait to play those yeah. games. Yeah, that's the last little bit of news, I guess. Hell yeah. But holy shit, what a good fucking Nintendo Direct that was. Yeah, it was it was the best one I've ever seen. That Terry fucking trailer is so it's good. good. It's one of the best reveal trailers for a character I've seen. Yeah, ever, people people's ever. homework should be to watch the Terry re- reveal trailer if they haven't. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, go It's watch just all the Fatal Fury characters trying to grab at a fucking invite to smash and Terry just kind of <laughs> getting it. Geese Howard. Yeah, Geese Howard fucking fall- falling off the Howard estate again. And falling into another game. Yeah. <laughs> falling into Tekken. Uh, Whoops. But um, uh, that shit is is good. I'm enjoying all the noise around SNK. Yeah, S- SNK is back it, and bigger than ever. It's really fucking hype because this means that a Fatal Fury mm, may be coming. That would be really fun. I'd like to- Terry. Terry. Th- Terry being in Smash is huge. Yeah. And it wasn't even KOF Terry. It wasn't. It was Fatal Fury specifically. Yeah, specifically Fatal Fury Terry. I love KOF, so... but the KOF games, are as great fighting games as they are, I have KOF ninety eight. It's one of my favorite fucking games. I, I own it on Switch. Uh, really good port too. Um, KOF ninety eight, dope fucking game. Uh, guess what? The KOF games are kind of flaccid. They yeah. they're crossovers between all the other SNK games. That's why they exist. They're fun though. I like them, but yeah. they're they're fun. They're yeah. fun games, but that's like you know his moves look good. Did you see Sakurai being oh. like, "I'll show you a bit of time. oh yeah, it's, oh. his stage too." Oh, man, oh it's it's, so it, it's gonna ah! be fun. I can't ah, wait. it's gonna be so good. Fighting characters getting representation in a crossover fighting game. I can't. Super Smash Brothers has become video games. The video game. Yeah, it's nuts, and it's so good. It's. It's because now if you if you take the Smash Web and just take the canon of every like everything is in the same universe mm-hmm. now, like it it's not. It's gonna be so good. I can't. I cannot wait. So that's that's gonna be really fun. Uh, anyway, thanks for listening to Game Punks. Uh, first proper episode in a while, but it's a proper episode. God damn, yeah. we had some shit to talk about. 
Uh, and I'm going to have more to talk about next week because I'm going to mm, be going through the fucking Fire Emblem. I'm going to beat that shit. And we're going to get into some spoiler I talk. I've beaten Outer Wilds and won't be able to say anything. I, I may just have I'll to do just, some... I'll just stand here I, vibrating I may have to do some here. Fire Emblem spoiler talk next episode. But uh, that shit is... Mm, I can't wait to finish it. And then I get to play FF8. Oh, boy. Oh, fucking boy. I can't wait. Uh, I, I've been waiting. Triple Triad. I cannot wait to play Triple Triad. Holy fuck. I'm so excited. It's so On my good. fucking Switch, playing Triple Triad Portable. Mm, 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 I cannot wait. Mm. But anyway. They need, to, they need to make Triple Triad a fucking mobile phone game. The fact that they haven't yet is kind of a, a big misgiving on their part. Bitches, yeah, maybe it's you stupid idiots, do it's it. You worst. cowards, you fools. I will actually give you money for card packs. But oh, this <laughs> shit's going to be so good. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, without further ado, we will end this uh, episode of Game Punks with a hearty uh, go look at us on social media. <laughs> yes. Uh, I will, as soon as I'm done playing the Outer Wilds, because I've taken a break from streaming just the time that I finished Outer Wilds, because uh, it's very much a game where you have to kind of remember everything. And there is a log that tells you everything, but um, I'd rather not have to go back to it after like a day and being like, I forgot what I did last. Uh, so I'll pick up streaming in like a day or two after I beat Outer Wilds again. All right. And I'll post that uh, schedule on the Twitters and probably Facebook. Dope. And that is uh, Scratch Me Silly at uh, twitchtv.com slash scratch me silly. And I am on Twitter as Nouveau Art Punk. That is me. That's that's all I do. I'm a, twi- I'm a Twitterite. I'm addicted to Twitter. I'm a Twitter. I'm addicted to Twitter. <laughs> this is my, my advice. But, uh, you know, shit's going to be dope. That's yeah. all that matters. All right. Well, without further ado, everybody, thank you very much for listening to Game Punk. Uh, good have good. Or morning. Have good. Yeah, whenever you're listening to this, have a good one. Do it. <laughs>